Case Customer Creations is sponsored by Bits and Bits. Use the code JBates to save 10% off your next router bit or CNC bit purchase at bitsbits.com. When I first started woodworking, uh, I did not have access to hardwoods, nice, beautiful hardwoods. I also did not have the tools to process rough sawn hardwoods. So for me to acquire any type of hardwood was a lot of work. I have a series of videos on this channel called Trash to Treasure, where I would dismantle uh, box spring mattresses, cabinet face frames from a kitchen remodel, uh, any piece of furniture that was left by the dumpster in an apartment complex I lived at, um, all kinds of dismantling to gain access to just a tiny amount of hardwoods. I'm telling you, it was a ridiculous amount of work for a small reward. But I would have these these pieces of wood that I did not have access to prior and it was, it was interesting to work with them, even if it was small projects. So that means the majority of my projects were made out of box store lumber. Like this right here. This is a stack of 2x10s for an upcoming project. This will be furniture piece number 5 in a bedroom set that I made years and years ago. So when I made this particular bedroom set, um, I, I wanted to progress in difficulty as I made the whole set, but also I wanted to source all of the material out of box store lumber so it would be more accessible to um, so the projects would be more accessible to people out there. I started with a 2x4 and 2x6 bunk bed. Now 2x4s I don't particularly like to work with around here because the majority of them are Douglas fir and they have kind of have this pink hue to them that I kind of don't like. 2x6s are typically white pine which in my opinion is just a little bit on the soft side. So I, I did make that 2x4 and 2x6 bunk bed. After that uh, the rest of the projects were sourced out of larger material. So if you go up to a 2x8, 2x10, 2x12, it's around where I'm, where I'm at in Mississippi, it's southern yellow pine. So <laughs> a lot of people have either a, a, a love or a hate relationship with southern yellow pine. There's no middle ground. So I particularly love this material. If you, if you get these wider boards, they almost always have the center pith in the middle that you want to remove for stability reasons. And the wider boards typically have less knots as well. So if you remove the knots for visual re reasons, remove the center pith for stability reasons, what you're left with is some nice, beautiful, beautiful straight grain material that you can make pretty nice projects out of. Projects that would surprise you from the stereotypical, oh, that's just pine, you know? So uh, anyway, that's what this is for. It's for an upcoming project for that bedroom set. But the subject of this video is project number one in that bedroom set, and that is the 2x4 and 2x6 bunk bed. We, we've we used that bunk bed since I built it. It's been disassembled and moved into its current, currently it's in its uh, fourth different location. Uh, so it can be taken down and put back together and it's still just as strong as it was day one. Actually, we made a couple different modifications to it and I'm gonna jump into SketchUp and show you some of those modifications now. This is the bunk bed as it was originally designed and built. Very basic design, 2x4s, 2x6s, no angled cuts, very basic construction, and it is solid. It is solid as a rock, no racking in either direction. The side assemblies act as ladders, evenly spaced platforms to get up to the top. And if you notice on the top, I did not put any rails, and that's because I initially designed this for adults. And I don't know a single adult in my entire life who has ever fallen off the bed. So I didn't put rails there. Of course, you can obviously add rails. I actually ended up adding rails down the road. It was a couple years after building this that I actually added these rails. And now my daughter wants to use this in her bedroom. She wants to remove the bottom bunk completely and use the top bunk. So that way she can have more floor space down below. So turn the bunk bed into a loft bed. There are a couple things that I need to do to make this good enough for her to sleep on the top. So I want to build a ladder on the front. Very easy modifications here due to the way that these pieces nest into place. Everything will just fall into place like it was originally designed that way. So I'm going to add this vertical piece and these horizontal ladder rungs with a 9 inch spacing for each one of the foot platforms. That leaves me with 13 inches for the first step. That's totally fine. I'll also add these three vertical pieces to stop her from rolling forward off of the bed. The back side and the left side are snug up against the wall with no space for her to fall off in those directions. That's fine. And on the footboard side over here, 
She has a tall chest of drawers right there. She never sleeps at the foot of her bed. She's always curled up in a ball right here near the pillow. So I'm not worried about this being um, as is. Uh, with that being said, this is just a small, simple modification. Just need a few boards. And I happen to have some 10 foot two by fours on hand. So I will use one, two, three, 10 foot two by fours to cut these pieces. <laughs> Here in the bedroom, you can see that I've already removed the lower frame, so the bunk bed is now a loft bed, so we can get more floor space for this little princess tent to go in the corner. Uh, to the right of the bunk bed, you can see a chest of drawers that I completed. That's part of the bedroom set. I completed that years ago. To the right of that is actually the lid to the blanket chest, which is in her closet. And to the left of the bunk bed is a nightstand that I'm going to replace with a southern yellow pine version. Uh, on top of the bunk bed, <laughs> that's one of those temporary solutions that uh, is probably going to be a lot longer lasting than what you typically think of as temporary. I just screwed a piece of, of uh, super strut right to the top of it for a, a solid mount to hang her gymnastics rings. She's in love with these gymnastics rings. Gymnastics rings are fantastic exercise for children. So I don't care how ugly and temporary that uh, black bar looks. Uh, it allows my daughter to get some really, really good exercise indoors, which is fantastic. The installation of the ladder, pretty basic, pretty simple, very straightforward. I do want to give my wife just a huge pat on the back here for allowing me to bring this handsaw in and cut this board in place and spray sawdust all over the bedroom. And uh, she was a trooper for that. She did. <laughs> she did hold the vacuum right around it as I was cutting this. So uh, kudos for that. Uh, but yeah, here it is. It's just a very, very basic modification to a bunk bed to turn it into a loft bed. I am not going to add any finish at all to these pieces because as this bunk bed ages and changes and moves, it's, it's all going to gather fingerprints and finger oils and, and um, it's, it's just going to age naturally. The horizontal rail that I have on top, there's no finish on it and you can see how much it's already looking like the rest of the project as it is. Um, the rest of the project I used an, a, a, a tinted wax that I'm just not too fond of, so I'm not going to take the hassle to, to add it just for visual consistency. That's it for this one, a very basic modification, turning a bunk bed into a loft bed. Uh, super simple to do. Anybody can do this. Anybody can make this bunk bed with just very, very basic tools. If you're interested in more information on this bunk bed or the chest of drawers or the blanket chest, or the bookcases. I'll have links down in the description where you can uh, check out those projects. Go to my website, jacecustomcreations.com slash newsletter and sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss anything that I publish. You guys take care. Have a great day and I'll talk to you in the next video.